And you know what you tell them? Say it's three types of people. It's people from around the way. It's people that's in the way. And what else? It's people that make a way. Big motion. I lost a bag and got a bigger bag. I lost a friend and got a real friend. Thought I lost a plug. He was really just a middle man. Things just be tests. Like the universe tests you with things. Remote surveillance drone. Robotic flies. <clears throat> So this was a fly. This is not the first mechanical one that I've run across. They are being used for remote surveillance drone. Robotic flies. <clears throat> so this was a fly. This is not the first mechanical one that I've run across. They are being used for surveillance, not by the government per se, but more by these entities that are not directly human, or, well, they have a different lineage than the ones that they are using them to spy and torture with advanced technologies like this. This is what it looked like before. Um, then its head fell off and was magnetic. Um, so, you can even see the little wire that connected to the inside of the rest of it. I don't know what they're made out of. I was done with it. And, of course, that was not the first one that I've actually encountered. This was the first one I originally encountered in 2018. It showed up in a hotel room at a La Quinta in Tyler, Texas. Um... Now, when I first noticed it on the wall, it dawned on me that there was no way that this thing could have come into my room um, because I had not opened the door or anything. It had just shown up. Um, this was about the same time that I was having assistance from these interdimensional entities who were altering physics so that I would be able to figure out certain things. Uh, inside of my head, I was able to hear someone say, don't let him figure out where it came from, and as soon as that was said, it started flying over to this spot behind the dresser where there was a hole that went into the floor. It's also probably important to note that I did keep the one from 2018. This is a photo of it today, October 2nd. Um, it's seen better days, but as you can tell, you can even kind of see wiring. What are y'all thoughts about that? that? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Anybody got experience like is bro talking about something real or he just his own version of Alice in the Wonderland? To use it, you just put the glasses on. Then as you walk by people, the glasses will detect when somebody's face is in frame. This photo is used to analyze them. And after a few seconds, their personal information pops up on your phone. Uh, Cambridge Community Foundation. Oh, hi, ma'am. Wait, are, are you a uh, Betsy? Yes. Oh, okay. I think I, uh, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's great to meet you. I'm Kane. Oh wait. Oh, so do you happen to be a person working on like like minority stuff for like Muslims in India at all or something? Wait, yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you Kashif? Yes. Oh, I've read your work before. It's super wait, cool. Awesome. Oh. So here's how it works. We stream the video from the glasses straight to Instagram and have a computer program monitor the stream. We use AI to detect when we're looking at someone's face. Then we scour the internet to find more pictures of that person. Finally, we use data sources like online articles and voter registration databases to figure out their name, phone number, home address, and relatives names. And it's all fed back to an app we wrote on our phone. Is your address for <laughs> Valley? <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, 303. Yeah. Is uh, oh my god, <laughs> yes, <laughs> not anything, but yes. <laughs> also attended Yale's so Young Global Scholar Summer <laughs> Program, right? <laughs> really? Yeah, oh. these, are, these are me in like middle school. Oh my god. What about John and Susan? Are they your, uh... Those are my parents. Parents? <laughs> okay. For year. That's diabolical, y'all. Like, somebody looking at you, they could just figure out where you live like that just with... Because of the pictures we post on, on these social medias. Man.
years, Starbucks didn't publish their ingredients for their coffee drinks. It was a mystery until I convinced a barista to show me the ingredients on the back of the bottles they were using to make menu items like their pum famous pumpkin spice lattes. I found out here in the United States, Starbucks was coloring their PSLs with caramel coloring level four, an ingredient made from ammonia and linked to cancer, but using beta carotene from carrots to color their drinks in the UK. After publishing an investigation and widespread media attention, Starbucks removed caramel coloring from all of their drinks in America and started publishing the ingredients for their entire menu. We are on the way to a new order. So is that their objective to poison us? Get us up out of here? So we are between orders. Uh, do you agree with that? Or are there ways of uh, what are we able to keep on the positive side from the old order to bring into a new world order and how can we avoid that that new world order uh, becomes like a jungle growing back and we rather uh, have a order based on international law and the principles that have brought us prosperity and uh, freedom uh, for decades. We are, you know, the post-Cold War era has come to a close. We're at the start of something new. We have the capacity to shape what that looks like and at the heart of it will be many of the core principles and core institutions of the existing order adapted uh, for the challenges that we face today and that's a, a lot of what i tried to lay out in my remarks some of that goes to geopolitics and how we build uh, or update the international economic order in ways that address the needs of working people address the climate crisis it seemed like they trying to the world economic forum is just a wild place sometimes i see some of these videos y'all be blowing my mind Like a demon. Vehicles are catching fire in Florida after coming into contact with salt water from Idalia's flooding. Here's what happens. Salt particles get into the battery and other electrical components, and they act as a conductor, leading to a short circuit and eventually a fire and the risk of ignition lasts for weeks after a storm. Florida fire rescue officials said that anyone whose EV came into contact with salt water during Edalia should move the vehicle out of their garage immediately. The department also reminded locals to remember that electric scooters and golf carts are just as much at risk of fire. No electric vehicles of any type should be driven through salt water. When an EV battery catches fire, it isn't like a regular fire either. The battery packs are encased in metal and hard to get to at the bottom of the cars. The fire sometimes takes tens of thousands of gallons of water and hours of firefighting to extinguish and even then may reignite days later. Federal officials say flooded EVs should be moved at least 50 feet away from buildings, other vehicles and combustibles. They gonna have like a whole like special place probably for these EVs like uh, is on EV junk, y'all. NSA invent Bitcoin. The theory's picking up steam because in 1996, the NSA released a paper called How to Make a Mint, the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash. In the paper, they have the backbones of what it would take to create something like Bitcoin. One of the sources for the paper is Tatsuaki Akimoto, who two years later created a public crypto ecosystem. And a lot of people are pointing out the similarities between this name and Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of the Bitcoin white paper. And guys, the plot thickens from there. The hashing algorithm that Bitcoin is built on Shaw 256 was created by the NSA. So that begs the question. Did they take somebody idea and have this like planned for decades? Let me know y'all thoughts. Do anybody got any information on that? Let me know y'all thoughts.
freaking alive inside the pasta. It's like fucking, look at that, they're inside. Look, now they're coming out. Alive. I'm gonna show you something. Did they like, I don't even know y'all. Let me know what y'all think about that. Let me know what y'all think about that. And this is the stuff that you can't explain when you live close to Skinwalker Ranch. Found these lights, they're going two different ways. They almost look like rainbows. Yeah, like I said, this is... Some of the stuff you can't explain above Skinwalker. Can't be a rainbow. Maybe it's a moonbow. It's got brighter again. It's a portal. I don't know. <laughs> this is the stuff you can't explain. I, I've never seen an alien, but I'm telling you. Whatever that is, it's real. Look at my uh, square. It's even captured the, like, the object. Y'all think Skinwalker Ranch is, like, is it like an access point portal for certain places? Let me know y'all thoughts. Not from the ground. I don't know. <laughs> Illuminati. We I've had people on here and they talk about the Illuminati. Do you believe in it? No. <laughs> Literally, people come on and think it's real? Yeah. Okay, so, like, what are the other ones? There's the Illuminati, and who are the other ones that are like that? Um, there's, like, other secret yeah. groups, right? Yes, 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 secret societies. Right? I'm, like, I'm rich as fuck. I'm Jewish. Nobody asked me to join any of them secret societies, right? right. Nobody. I'm, like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> Can I at least get an invite to a cocktail party? <laughs> nobody. Nobody. You was trying to set Shannon up, like, yeah, drop some of them names. Let's see if you do it. I don't know. What y'all think about that one? I'm like, okay, maybe it's me. <laughs> then you're you going you gonna, to you gonna, uh, uh, blow the lid on the thing. Mark. No, if it's cool. I mean, I've been to many parties. I haven't said shit, right? <laughs> Is that like Project Blue Bean? Or what What do y'all think that is? Did you guys know that an 80 year old man in the mountains of Montana just got caught with his own private cloning laboratory? On Monday, Arthur Shoebarth got sentenced to six months in federal prison along with a $20,000 fine for cloning Kyrgyzstani sheep. Shoebarth created a hybrid of local Montana mountain sheep with this rare endangered sheep from Central Asia. These sheep are called Marco Polo sheep and they can get up to 300 pounds, making them the largest sheep species in the world. The dude was planning to sell them to hunting reserves for between $10,000 to $50,000 each. If an 80 year old man in the mountains of Montana can create a cloning laboratory, what else do you think is going on out there in the world? Let me know what you think. I thought that was a boat. That was a boulder. Wow. Faster the way, niggas know I ain't play. Faster the 
rate when I switch your day. Stands for the prince of the damn bong day. Stay. That's all? Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> On Unanswered Universe, we get sent in strange things quite often. Can't always tell if these are new species or maybe we just never seen these things before. So I leave it up to you guys to name these species. Doesn't mean that it's new. I'm sure one of you guys know the answer. Leave it in the comments, Unanswered Universe. You see, what we're looking at is beyond cranial deformation because the size of this child's head is massive. Simply massive. And there's no known disease that I've read about that can account for such a strange being. The sheer size of the head as compared to the torso means that even without binding, this, this, uh, this skull is huge. And based on your medical expertise, you do not think this is the result of cranial deformation or head binding? Definitely not. Um, if you look at the, uh, the bowing of the frontal bone, uh, it's not flattened, so it's unlikely that this is the result of cranial deformation. So it is quite possible that this individual was born with this elongated yes, head? Yes, this, this individual was born with a skull structure exactly like this. Um, this skull is different than that of the skulls in Paracas because the occipital bone is not uh, protruding posteriorly uh, as the Paracas uh, skull has got. Um, and also there are uh, no extra sutures along the posterior. Away. Do y'all think that's like, uh, like how they had the Devasolvins, the Neanderthals, you had the different type of humans, you know, they really don't talk about that because I think that conflict with uh, some biblical stuff, you know, it get very complicated. Like, do I think God did some stuff? Yeah, but I think other people have been playing in his sandbox. Um, do or do y'all think that's like our our um, our rival or the? Because you know, human beings are apex predators. Do y'all think that's our predator? Some that's meant to hunt us. Some smarter, stronger, faster. And you think they just like either hibernating or did we happen to like? team up with the Neanderthals and take them out. I mean, or the Devasovans have been some like, and we're the last ones left and we're all like, you know, and mixing and that's how we are here today. Some of us more of something than, you know. So let me know your thoughts on that. We go. I told you guys, the Great Reset is here. Bank of America goes completely down and nearly 20,000 customers couldn't get into their accounts. I'm sorry, but if I saw this when I opened my app to my bank account, I would completely lose my shit. This is, this is crazy. I have a feeling that we're gonna see a lot more accounts going to zero because did you guys know under the Dodd-Frank Act, you are now an unsecured creditor and share in the burden of a bank loss. This act gives the right for the banks to confiscate your funds and use them as needed. You could thank Obama for that one. But let me show you what's really going on because nothing is what it seems. First, let me paint you a picture of all the current events that's happening. So you remember Verizon just a couple days ago went completely out. That was a nationwide outage. Everybody's phone went SOS, no text messages, no calls, no nothing. Then you have the East Coast port situation where all the ports on the East Coast are shutting down and it's costing the US about $5 billion per day. Quick sidebar, if you guys look into the union leader of the port situation, Harold Daggett, Allegedly, he has mob ties and he beat one case because the star witness ended up unalived in the back of a trunk and he has this fat mansion and has Bentleys and all these other exotic cars. So there's that. Then you have Hurricane Helene completely wiping out Asheville, North Carolina. And I looked into this and there's some weird things going on here. First, did you guys know they've been planning since 2016 to turn Asheville into a smart city? It's called the Asheville Smart City Network and in short it's to modernize their grid and upgrade their whole infrastructure and things of that nature, but why does this look familiar? I've, I've seen this somewhere before. Oh, that's because it did happen last year in Maui when they had the Digital Government Summit to turn Maui into a smart city right before the fires. Interesting. Now, I know what you're asking yourself. How do you even plan something like a hurricane to even do all this? So here's a US patent for a method for controlling hurricanes. So I'll just let you chew on that for a minute. And we can't forget the massive lithium battery deposits that's about 70 miles from Asheville. You know, those things that power your phone and laptop. 
Teslas, smart cities, I'm just spitballing. And why would the biggest asset manager in the world, BlackRock, be secretly preparing for the collapse of the US dollar? Now, what would some of those signs be? I don't know, infrastructure problems like communication, um, empty bank accounts. Oh, you mean that same BlackRock who just created their own stock exchange in Texas and it's gonna be on the blockchain? Now, wouldn't you need your own exchange after the Great Reset and everything collapses in the current stock market? Because it looks like they're ahead of the game. And of course, the Simpsons strike again with their latest episode called the series finale. I'm still 10. When are you going to grow up? Never. <laughs> that was beautiful. The rebellious spirit of a 10 year old boy was more powerful than the most advanced AI in the world. The Simpsons has not ended. It has reset. Now that's an interesting choice of words saying it's not the end, but a reset. And we all know the Simpsons don't miss. All these things are telltale signs of a great reset when we're talking about infrastructure, finance, communication, smart cities. Not financial advice, but I'm loading up on gold, silver, crypto because BlackRock is doing the same. I'm following the money. Really any kind of other asset to weather this reset storm. But let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Hey, that's diabolical for real. Like the fact that BlackRock doing that and then what y'all think is it? With this great reset, will a lot of us go or is depopulation going to be a thing? You are not going to believe what I found. This is a hamburger from 2010. I'm cleaning out my grandmother's house and she has this. For real. I used to hear about it, but I never really saw it in real life. But here we are. Oh, I was probably... oh my god. <laughs> what is that? 2010. Look at this. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm Brad Paisley and I'm... Guys, and we... We eat that. I'm a Scottish Rite Mason. Masonry is really without equal on, in terms of a, a belief system, which is that no one can be told what to believe, especially when it comes to the very personal nature of belief in our power. Society uh, has all of these, these different factions, but must somehow coexist. And Freemasonry is, I think, the best path to that, the best. I mean, it's worked for this country for 200 something years. And I think that it's a big deal nowadays for that way of thinking to go on. It's needed, this, this viewpoint of, of um, total equality for, for all peoples and all religions. I hope that it has uh, a lot more roots to be uh, put down. Stanley Kubrick. This is Stanley Kubrick and this is NASA and the Apollo logo. Here is Stanley Kubrick and this is Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. There is a model. Sorry if it's too loud. Like I said, guys, I tried my best to adjust the volume and I got to eventually probably add some captions in. So I got to find something that could, you know, withstand the, the gigabyte that the video is. So. Of the lunar ladder, there's Stanley Kubrick. Here you got NASA, astronauts, and Stanley Kubrick's at the top of the set. Here they are simulating no gravity with wires around their suits. Here they are building the lunar lander. And there is Werner von Braun entering the lunar lander. Again, Stanley Kubrick from the back, and there is the set at the television. The lunar lander again, and the set with the astronaut. Now take a look, this is the footprint of the moon, the first footprint. And Stanley Kubrick is right there, analyzing the work. Here is Neil Armstrong, here is Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick and Apollo 11 logo there. 
ABC News has obtained a videotape that shows clearly what happened when the... Um, talk to me in Discord. The president fell ill. Here's White House correspondent Ann Compton. Here's something odd I came across. This is President Bush Sr. Not to be confused with his son, a later president. And in 1992, he vomited on the Japanese prime minister and then fainted. Now the odd thing. The link is in my, uh, my links on the profile. Firstly, I don't remember this happening at all. But now there's all these clips on YouTube I'm just seeing. Secondly, watch his wife. That's Barbara Bush, who some say is Aleister Crowley's daughter. Some say is a man. As soon as she sees he's going to vomit, she darts over to cover his mouth and nose. Possibly the worst thing you could do, right? Was she trying to hide something being seen from camera? And thirdly, look at this news clip. They are about to report that the president died the same day, then suddenly backtrack. This just into CNN headline news, and we re repeat, or we say right off the bat, we have not confirmed this through any other source. No, stop, stop. We are now getting a correction. We will not uh, give you that story. It was regarding some other tragic news involving President Bush, but... Uh... And somebody was out there splicing a bat and a cat. <laughs> bat cat. He caught the CIA selling drugs in South Central LA and then exposed it on a hearing on CNN. You, have you seen this? Mm -mm. Jamie pulled up. I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. <laughs> Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. I have Watchtower documents heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. I have been trying to get this out for 18 years and I have the evidence. You should immediately bring that information to the Los Angeles Police Department. <laughs> I did bring this information out 18 years ago and I got shot at and forced out of LAPD because of it. It's wild. These people today don't know what it is. And see, I believe a lot of that stuff happens. Like, uh, man. And especially when it was, uh, technology wasn't as advanced, social media wasn't really around. It was easy to drop somebody, probably a suitcase, hey, slide this up under the rug. A lot of people probably know stuff, but they not speaking on it. Ideas. Right. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port will lock down. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me. I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money to pay their salaries. Well, they go one from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract. And let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you. And you have no idea what that means. Nobody does. Man, he letting people know. He letting them know he would get busy. This is my fifth attempt of sending animal DNA to 23andMe. With the help of my wife, we extracted DNA from our pet horse named Charlie. And after two months, we got the results back. 
They claimed that he was East Asian and Native American, but also Southern European from Spain. They're basically claiming that Charlie is Mexican, which might make sense because we got him from a Spanish dealer. What animal DNA should we send to 23andMe next? Oh, I think that's really Bigfoot. There's some commercials. Is that a guy in a suit? Tried to get it. I think it's going to slow down. Or is it orangutan? That just been an orangutan? I don't know. Up. I call this the gate of the giants. It's literally this giant gate or this giant door that I found in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere. We looked up through the woods and that there was just these huge rocks. So we hiked up to them to see what they were. And on both sides of this doorway or this gate, there's like these perfect little guard stations carved out of the rock. And there's these strange, perfectly circular holes going into the rock that look like some kind of like ventilation system. Like this door literally looks like it could just open. It's split into like four sections. There's a handprint on the wall next to the door, like a giant handprint or a giant footprint on the wall right next to the door. Look at it. That mm. is crazy. I literally got like the see that hole right there in that rock's like perfectly circular holes going into the rock and this big old handprint or footprint right in the rock next to the door. And there was this weird layer of like metal on the edges of all these rocks. Look how perfectly that giant rock is just sitting on top of the door. This was just the weirdest thing. I had the weirdest feeling being out there. It felt like that door could open at any seconds. We threw rocks into the little keyhole in the middle to see if we could get it to open. <clears throat> this is just one of the coolest things. Tell me that doesn't look like a door. And tell me that's not a giant's footprint or handprint. This is definitely a door. That's, that's very interesting. when we could take the batteries out yeah and then at some point they soldered them in because they soldered the batteries in even when you turn the phone off it's not off it's easy to demonstrate it's still transmitting they surveil us and our kids 24 hours a day google alone does that more, over more than 200 different platforms most of which no one's ever heard of people have no idea the extent they're being monitored if they have android phones they're being monitored even when your phone is off even when the power is off you're still being monitored we are on the way to a new world. Address the climate crisis. What's your thoughts on that? Somebody was, do y'all think somebody a great, you know, sculptor or? They got petrified. This is a live NASA feed. And then so we're taking pictures of the ionosphere, then it zooms on the North Pole. I don't know if it's auto tracking something, and then these come into sight. Don't know what they are, and then it zooms in really close on
Look like flying refrigerators. What the heck was that? Playing God with the atmosphere. That's a new headline report from the Atlantic.com. The Atlantic report then states, quote, many climate experts see geoengineering, a.k.a. climate engineering, as a last resort. With the Atlantic.com headline in mind, here's more breaking reports. Massive tornado outbreak reduced areas to rubble across multiple states. That's from NBC News. From PostandCourier.com, storm pelts city with 90 mile per hour winds, 3 inch high velocity hail. From the New York Post, softball sized hail smashes windows, destroys homes. From ABC News, tornadoes leave trail of destruction. From AccuWeather, generational tornado outbreak. And another from Fox Weather, baseball sized hail, 90 mile per hour winds. And here's one more from AccuWeather. Huge hailstorm causes extensive damage, could challenge records. With all those dire breaking headlines in mind, again, consider the new report title from the Atlantic.com Playing God with the Atmosphere. Question Are you okay with man, quote, playing God with the atmosphere? This is Dane Wigington with geoengineeringwatch.org. I mean, What's the pros and cons? What's the pros and cons? I need to know that before we can even answer that question. Never, ever, ever observed another sort of planet moon relationship like we have with our moon. And the fact of the matter is life wouldn't exist on this planet without the moon there, uh, without the moon creating intertidal zones. There's right. there's all sorts of anomalies about the moon itself. It's, you know, it's 25% the size of the Earth, but about, I think, 4 or 5% its mass. So it's vastly lighter and yet stronger at the same time too. There's a really strange yes, dynamic. Stronger? It's stronger, yeah. So it's like it should be deforming at, at, a, at a different rate based on its density and the gravitational pull that's exerted on it by the planet. In fact, there's all these gravitational anomalies on the moon. We've detected like gra- different levels of gravity um, in different places on the moon. But what's, what is interesting about the moon is that because there's no atmosphere we can see the craters that are on it right and some of the craters are massive like they're like 400 kilometers across right but they only ever go to a certain depth they only ever go like i think it's a couple of kilometers deep like that it's like we know the 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 mechanics of like crater um, dynamics right so we can see this on on the earth and on others other planets when stuff hits and it's bigger it's going to go deeper on the moon Everything stops at this one uniform depth, no matter how big the crater is. It's as if it's like this, there's this softer material on top for a couple of kilometers, and then it's some hard shell that it just bounces off, and it just, does, nothing penetrates. I mean, they did say the moon is truly um, some type of base, and it's hollow on the inside. That little thin layer could be like very, very strong shielding. Who knows? I mean, uh, the ancients uh, spoke about a time to where the moon didn't exist in the sky. So I don't know. And he said the earth don't work the same without the moon. Two things can be true, right? This is just an inspirational motivation. You know what I'm saying? You don't know a lot of black men that come from the hood got an island. I got an island. It's called Love Island. So not only does he own Love Island, he owns Love Air, his private jet that he flies to an island that he takes women to for I'm these extravagant. Say, I... Yeah, you can say it. It's obvious, right? He's He just took over Epstein's enterprise. I think that's partially true, but I think that these were running simultaneously. I don't know how far back Love Island goes, so maybe you've got a point there. People definitely knew where to go to since they couldn't go to Epstein Island anymore. Let's put it that way. I mean, at the very least, he certainly would have benefited. What if the people who get scapegoated are just scapegoated because the the other guy who's running an island gets a little more powerful and they want to like get rid of their competition? That's I didn't even think about it till you said it, but now I'm like, is Diddy behind Epstein getting caught? Like, right. is I don't know. That's an interesting thought though. But because you, he you had to have made more money and had more power with Epstein out of the way. You get two birds stoned at once too. You make people feel yep. like they've taken care of the child trafficking problem. And everybody did. Everybody was like, this is the one time that this ever happened. And it's over, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. And you weirdo well, people that are still worried about this, we already took right. care of the one guy. That's right. really interesting. It's like they give up Epstein. Diddy gets stronger. He continues on in anonymity. Nobody gives a. Sh- anymore because they think they caught the one and only guy who ever that's a really interesting so the question is who is it now who got stronger than diddy that's a good point and scapegoated him
I don't know. I think really what's going on there is they both offended somebody and it was time to, you know, get their butts up out of there. It's like with Diddy, I heard he was suing the liquor company and talking too much. So you never know who got power to, you know, put some light on them skeletons in your closet. Because the CIA invested millions into telepathic research doesn't mean there's people with these special abilities. Yeah, what about the, the classified accounts of those who actually do? What are you talking about? Project Starseed, late 90s, all the children who were born with overdeveloped electromagnetic fields. Special Agent Grok spilled it all in his little secret journal. A woman by the name of Janet Winslow conceived a child on September 5th, 1997. Same day, one of the agency's uh, electromagnetic satellite monitors went haywire. Agent Grok was the chief executive over these satellites, and so he printed the GPS coordinates to figure out where uh, the disturbance came from turned out to be a residential address in Manhattan and so Grok and the fellow agent went to investigate ain't that uh Elon's uh AI huh let me know expecting to find some kind of rogue nuclear weapon but when they got there it was just a young couple in a townhouse Grok standing there with like an electromagnetic field detection device and the couples standing there like how can we help you basically Grok says to the woman like ma'am I don't know how to tell you this, but do you have any idea why there would be an electromagnetic field equivalent to a class one weapon of mass destruction emanating from your stomach? And then the couple just like looked at each other like shocked and confused. And she says back to Grok, like, sir, um, like, well, wh uh, what do you mean? Like, I have no idea. Grok says back to her, like, look, I'm really sorry to inconvenience you, but would you mind coming in for a quick x-ray? Like, we just need to get a better understanding here. And so she agreed and her and her boyfriend went with the agent back to a facility for x-rays. And as Grok got the results, he was just like bamboozled. And as he shows her the x-ray, he says, ma'am, I know this is probably not how you'd have liked to find out about this, but look, um, you're pregnant. And so Janet got like very emotional at this point and they brought them back home and wouldn't give them any more information on the matter. But, but what, um, they kept watching her look after they deep dived into the genetic makeup of this embryo they'd realized that it was what they'd later defined as a biological phenomena uh kept an eye over her shoulder throughout the whole pregnancy developed a knowing to her hospital and ultimately inserted a covert agent to pose as her doctor and cut to operation closed curtain um when delivery day came, the agent basically staged a vital emergency, said he needed to bring newborn for oxygen, uh, went to a private incubation room, sent the subject in question out to the private facility and brought Janet back a swapped out newborn. And lo and behold, the agency had in containment their very first biological phenomena. According to the U.S. government, forcing... Like how much do y'all think that occurs? Like, you know, somebody got some abilities like the Umbrella Academy and they say, oh, yeah, we got us one. Users to periodically change their passwords should go the way of the dodo because it actually makes you less safe and less secure. And this is according to the U.S. government, more specifically, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which has released its latest version of the Digital Identity Guidelines, which seeks to advise federal agencies, corporations that want to listen and really any people and it's got a variety of recommendations obviously a password like this pc gamer 123 probably is a bit too simple uh, but another article which i cannot get to format properly at all apologies about that uh, says that the document indicates that complicated passwords actually make you less safe because they're difficult to remember you're constantly resetting them they're difficult to type and one of the things that's interesting about all of the recommendations that they made, and they're a U.S. federal body that sets digital standards for government agencies, and all the research and all the work uh, is, and you can see in this example right here, uh, this crazy password, I'm a floofy kittens and all these crazy numbers, eventually just becomes this as it's easier to remember. After 13 years since it was originally posted, the federal government has finally caught up with XKCD because when XKCD was talking about password security, uh, you know, and sort of brute forcing and rainbow tables, they were talking about bits of entropy and how long your password is. And the reality is that having all the numbers and special characters and symbols and stuff don't make it that much harder to crack overall compared to just making the password longer because you add a lot more entropy and it's a lot easier to remember. So it's kind of 
nice that we're improving, but kind of sad that this was published uh, a little bit under 15 years ago. I think it was 13 or 14 years ago this went live, and the U.S. federal government is just now catching up to those kind of recommendations. Prepare for a lot of the people that called you a conspiracy theorist. They'll be walking up to you asking you tons of questions. Soon is going to be undeniable with how thin the veil is getting. The primary reason why there's more food recalls is because these deletes are actually fearing the ascension process more. So their objective is to poison us more, to lower our, lower our frequency. All right, their, their assumption is that we would actually gain less access to the light photon spectrum if, uh, if they poison us more and obviously keep us, uh, ensure that we're not in homeostasis. This is also associated with the amount of distractions that they can get us focused on. People are going to start witnessing extraterrestrials, UFOs, giants, uh, more animals that we have never seen are going to start surfacing. Second moon or asteroid uh, fragment that is going to be in our atmosphere. Personally, I believe this is also associated with new beings, new extraterrestrial entities that we will see on the planet. People also completely forget about the sinkhole that we recently found in China, all right? So this is confirmation that there is an inner Earth as well. Remember, Tiamat is a living being. I mean... I think that sinkhole been a thing for about like almost a decade, six to eight years. I think almost a decade. And a lot of times when people see these, this, this, that sinkhole that got a, like a whole force in it, whole like journey, um, to the center of the earth type thing, I, I'm pretty sure been around a lot of news I see be recycled It come out looking new. And it's like, man, I swear I wrote, read this four years ago. So. Mm. Okay, and just like we were attacked and fell in consciousness, so did this planet, all right? This planet is also in a state of amnesia and also regaining its ancient memories and waking up as well. The magic is returning to the realm. But what's going to happen is pretty soon Tiamat is going to have to cleanse itself, all right? And we are the purifiers on the planet, all right? So we are going to become activated in order to clean this planet up, all right? And there's also going to be other beings that are in synergy we're working in synergy with us, all right? Because you have to remember that the Sakaar Empire, the Draconians, that actually have us under uh, um, tyranny, has other planets uh, as well in tyranny um, that, they just, that they subjugated, all right? We aren't the only planet that actually is actually being subjugated, uh, subjugated by these, this tyrannical extraterrestrial race. This is actually why I stress the importance of removal of all parasitic organisms from the body, as well as detoxification, all right? And this is primarily for integration of the cosmic light body. Once you remove the parasitic organisms from the body, at that particular point in time, it's going to be a lot easier to go through the process of uh, fasting and uh, cleansing your body and converting to a H302 diet. The virus has the ability of surviving in a high alkaline environment. You should be also consuming lots and lots of chlorophyll. I expressed on several occasions that cilantro and chlorella is the best for heavy metal chelation. All right, this is a heavy metal detox that would ensure that lead, cadmium, and mercury, as well as aluminum, is out of your blood so you have the ability of trans transmuting that light. You step out in the sun with toxic metals like lead, cadmium, and mercury in your blood, it's equivalent to putting aluminum foil in a microwave and turning it on. Best way to eliminate parasites as well as their larvae is uh, by use of sweet wormwood, black walnut, and cloves. And wormwood, black walnut, and whole cloves uh, not only kills parasites but also eradicates their eggs. I do have this available on Holistic Remedies for Ascension, link in bio. The best natural binding agent for removing deceased parasitic organisms from the body is chlorophyll. All right. Some people use activated charcoal. That's also great. But chlorophyll, in my opinion, is more essential. OK, because chlorophyll actually is, a, uh, is synonymous to the plasma in our body and we benefit more from the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll has more essential nutrients. Gods and goddesses, a lot of the plants that these deletes are implementing are frequency induced. All right. So this is why it's important and imperative that you do detox the body from toxic metals. These are all the necessary steps that we shall take to ensure that we're properly prepared for cosmic light coat integration. For all high quality herbs and metaphysical products for spiritual exploration, click the link in my bio and visit Holistic Remedies, your extension to Ascension. Also, make sure that you're getting in nature, that you're grounding as well as sun gazing, all right? This is all essential. Oftentimes, we spend too much time under blue light radiation. Every eight minutes and 30 seconds that you're in nature, you receive new downloads, new data on cosmic wavelengths. This was the most evil man in history. During the early 1900s, there was a lawyer named Automatic, who was known for never losing a case in his entire career and raked in millions over the years. But no one knew that he was actually sabotaging his opponents, which would lead to them not showing up in court, and he would win by default. This went on for years until other lawyers accused Otto of causing their clients to disappear. 
they started to realize a pattern that every time they faced Otto, their client would never be seen from again right before the court date. The police were also notified, but had no clear evidence of Otto being responsible. But just in case they created a sting operation with a fake trial and defendant that they would keep 24-hour surveillance on. And sure enough, the night right before the trial, Otto was seen driving back and forth in front of the decoy's house. But unfortunately, he spotted an undercover cop and fled the scene. They attempted to chase him, but he was able to get away. He was never seen again by the public, and it was later discovered he purchased a ticket to flee the country on the Titanic. Ray J is That'd be wild if that's true. Pulling out Jaguar Wright for not responding to him. Ray J says that he's been hitting up Jaguar Wright to sit down with her to really talk to her to see what's going on. I'm assuming he wants to do a sit down style type of interview because he keeps saying, I want to make sure you get a bag. But from the way it sounds, it sounds like Jaguar did not reach back out to Ray J. Now this comes after she sat down with Piers Morgan and it seemed like everybody want to know what Jaguar is talking about, but Jaguar has been saying this for years. While she was on the Piers Morgan show, so was Vlad as in Vlad TV. After Jaguar wrapped up her segment with Piers Morgan, Vlad was up next. Vlad immediately went into how Jaguar Wright is a conspiracy theorist. He went on to say he doesn't co-sign anything she says. He said that she's never been on his show and he doesn't plan on having her on his show. Jaguar Wright has been saying for years that Diddy was a trafficker. Nobody believed him called a conspiracy theorist. But it wasn't until Cassie came out with her lawsuit accusing Diddy of doing what he was doing, that's when everybody was like, oh, she was telling the truth. And shout out to the real life street stars because they were the ones that allowed Jack to sit on that blue couch and just let her get it off her chest. Most people compare Jaguar's career to like a light switch. As fast as it went on, it went off. So they're trying to say that Jaguar Wright wasn't in the industry that long to be known what she claims she knows. Now, whether she experienced it, whether she witnessed it, or whether it came to her via third party, the facts are the facts. People try to water it down by saying that Diddy's just freaky. The Southern District of New York, the feds are not gonna come for you just because you were freaky. Another individual in particular coming for Jaguar Wright is Tamika Foster. If you recall on Real Life Street Stars, what people keep failing to realize, even with this Diddy thing, and if I'm wrong, please tell me, don't slaughter me in the comments. But I've heard that if you fly a woman out, that's uh, ex trafficking. So, and on the plane, you put her on that plane, you you ex trafficking. Jaguar called Tamika Foster a thief. She also alleges that Tamika Foster was blackmailing Usher. Because Jaguar sat down with Piers Morgan, she set the internet on fire. She was called everything but a child of God. And Tamika Foster had a few choice words for her. She also said that because Jaguar spoke on her deceased son, that it's on site. So Tamika Foster jumped into the comments of the Jasmine brand to get some things off her chest. By giving a platform to someone like Jaguar, who was notorious for spreading lies and baseless claims, you're only giving more weight to her slander. She hasn't been credible for decades. Her time in the industry was short-lived and long forgotten. And now she just makes a living by attacking everyone. Reporting on what she says gives the false impression that her statements have some merit. She's broke, irrelevant, and thrives off creating drama because there's nothing left for her. It's disappointing that you're amplifying her fabrications rather than letting them die in the irrelevance they deserve. She even had the audacity to speak about my deceased son. So for me, it's an on-site situation. The thing that everyone needs to understand is that no credible artist has had her around for at least 20 years. Whatever she may have witnessed back then was minimal at best. She was just a background singer, probably part of the B party, nowhere near the main artist buses or hotels. She's built the name off of spreading drama because sadly people love to hear gossip, especially about successful black figures. It feeds into this unfortunate need to tear others down, as if everyone must be on the same level and caught up in the same mess. Yes, she's gotten a few things loosely accurate, but that's more coincidence than credibility. She doesn't have any firsthand knowledge. It's all hearsay wrapped up in delusion. Stop giving this lunatic a platform. Her days are numbered and she's probably surviving off YouTube subscriptions from those who can't resist the drama. It's truly a shame to see someone like this getting any attention. No one credible has been around her in decades. So how could she possibly know anything real? And for the record, I definitely don't know her and she has never had a budget that could afford me. Her having my name in her mouth is like having gold teeth 
I'm surprised she didn't choke saying my effing name. Stop falling for the banana in the tailpipe. Now, it's not the first time Jaguar has pissed people off, and I'm pretty sure it won't be the last. Drop your thoughts in the comments. I mean, I'll be seeing some of the stuff she'd be saying and be wild. I'm surprised she didn't get hit with a cease and desist. Maybe they look at it like she crazy or something. What's y'all thoughts on that? They probably going to say he was crazy. And I was the person who filmed it. You're serious. And, okay. I'm serious. You're, I'm dead serious. Okay. The uh, conspiracy theorists were right on this on this occasion. Why? I don't know about Paul McCartney's death, but this they were right about. Okay. Why in God's name? Would, I don't know what they ask you first. Why the hell? If you're telling the truth, why would you do it? Why are you telling me? I mean, what the... Don't you think it's important for people to know the truth? Yeah, I got... Uh, yes, certainly. A, a, a massive fraud, a, an unparalleled fraud perpetrated against them. They should know. Okay. Um, I, I mean, they're already suspicious of the government. They may as well have their suspicions confirmed. Okay. And, well, I'll go into that. is that why you look a little haggard right now? Because you look a little worn. No offense. Like, well, also, yeah, because I haven't been taking care of myself too well. I've been drinking a lot, but... Is that because uh, of the stress of this? Of is course. It? Stress, guilt, just conflict of all kinds. Wow. I mean, so you, you, you feel bad about this, clearly. I mean, this is... I this... do feel bad about it. I also feel proud of it. It's a terrible conflict. Because you've pulled off one of the greatest... And ever. because I made a film, if you want to call it a film, which I consider to be my masterpiece. And you can't take credit or even talk about it as a... As well, a hereby, well, you are now. I'm hereby taking credit. Right. But you can't actually go out. You're doing... When people see this, no it'll be, you'll be dead. Until 10 years right. Or 15, 15 years yeah. So you can't talk to Roger Ebert about it, you know... Does that frustrate you? I have to pay the consequences for the decision that I made many years ago to go along with this. Like I deal with the devil. It's Faustian to be sure. Because, and is that why you got such power in Hollywood? I mean, that would explain that. Why I have the freedom I have, that was part of it, yes. So they, they, they said, do this moon thing and we'll when give I, you... When I made Spartacus, I didn't have this kind of freedom. Right. But I Speaking of terrifying, let's talk about the TikTok account Nutter Butter. <laughs> you guys seen this? No. You know Nutter Butters, right? The yes. little peanut. Yeah, dude. Yes. Someone said you got to go look up the Nutter Butter TikTok, and I was like, what could it possibly be? Here we go. Hold it's on. Terrifying. <laughs> Oh my god. Dude. No. Isn't that weird? It's every video, dude. That's for Nutter Butter. Oof. Every video is this extremely rare type of humor that like or like just that's because the thing is like very rare type is of that humor. How, it's like, a creative that like I don't even I mean, understand. I laughed at it because it's just it's that obscure. It's random. Dude, so you, right, you know it. older people hate that stuff though. Like <laughs> oh, that can't yeah. that can't make any but they, sense. They're, at all. they're already buying nutter butters because they love nutter butters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so now all these culture. young kids are like, I don't want a nutter butter. Now I do now because I do. they're from hell. <laughs> This was the real life Stewie Griffin in the small town of Moon City, Rhode Island, October 10th, 1954, marked the birth of a baby named Brock Lee. For the first few months, life was ordinary until an inexplicable man's voice echoed through their house when Brock turned six months old. Convinced of a haunting, Pete and Lori sought help from local paranormal investigators, but their efforts yielded nothing. Desperate, 
they relocated to a new home, but the mysterious voice persisted. During Brock's first birthday party, the family watched a police chase on the news. They chuckled at the striking resemblance between the pursued car and their own. To their disbelief, the chase unfolded into their neighborhood and their baby son Brock would exit the vehicle and run through the front door. He would then bark orders in a manly voice to lock all the doors and windows. As the police entered the home and arrested him, they discovered the extraordinary truth. Brock, the one-year-old, possessed the intellect of a genius and a fully developed brain. The voice that haunted them for the past year was, in fact, their son's. That's diabolical. If that's true, that's diabolical. It's just one hand. Ooh. One hand. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. It's just one hand. Yeah, boys. They're puny. Hmm. Puny? Say, let's pretend this brain is a puny little ant. Did that hurt? <laughs> nope. How about this? You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. I look crazy. Hell no. What if I told you that the moon isn't actually the moon? The moon's orbit is, is too perfect, tidally locked, always showing the same face. Ancient civilizations from the Sumerians to the Mayans spoke of a time before the moon existed, and that's because it didn't. Thousands of years ago, is something, something arrived, something massive. It was placed there, positioned with exact precision, and... It's been watching us ever since. The dark side of the moon is where uh, where the real operation is taking place, like a massive alien base brimming with advanced technology that's been manipulating life on Earth for as long as we've existed. Okay, like, don't you get it? This is why we've had such massive innovations in technology over the last 200 years. Like, we are being remotely colonized by this deranged extraterrestrial species, which orbits us from this massive data center, which we wrongfully believe to be the moon. Um, this is why we subconsciously have the idea of aliens as our biggest fear. They did this intentionally. They made sure we have a gut-wrenching fear at the slightest conceptual notion that they exist. This is a complete joke for entertainment purposes. Good God, don't come for me. You know what you tell them? Say it's three types of people. It's people from around the way. It's people that's in the way. And what else? It's people that make a way, big motion. I lost a bag and got a bigger bag. I lost a friend and got a real friend. Thought I lost a plug, he was really just a middle man. Things just be tests, like the universe tests you with things.